Okay, what is the journal FIR filter form? We uh, discussed it last week, uh, but let, let's just go through it quickly again. So this is Y of N, it is supposed to have, uh, of course, the coefficient, the perform, I mean, every signal that passed through the system is multiplied by a specific factor. And that actually is the modification on, uh, onto it. Now, this particular coefficient where, where it came into being, we're gonna discuss that in a while because normally the system output is equal to the system input, convolution, system function. That's how the relationship should be. So where, where does this thing came into being? And if you see it has a finite number of components, n number of components in this particular case, this m actually define the order of the filter. Okay, so we're gonna start uh, discussing this. You do remember the unit impulse, uh, delta of n, having a value of one at n is equal to zero and having a value zero when n is not equal to zero. So delta of n, I'm just going through it. You do remember these things, but because since we'll be using it, so I'm just recalling this knowledge as well. Also, if you shift that, uh, so at point k, it will look like delta of n minus k. So that means it will have a value one at n equal to k and it will have a value zero at any value other than k. So uh, this is also true for n minus one, n minus two and so on. So k is a generalized term in this particular case. That means if delta if this expression is delta of n minus k, that means this function has value only at n equal to k. Otherwise it is going to be zero. Now let's look at the uh, general uh, way any discrete time signal look like. You know, when we uh, perform the sampling, we end up with different samples that are being stored inside the computer and they generally look like this. But how do we represent them by mathematical expression? Because we have to write down programs, we have to write down mathematical expression, we have to do multiple processing on it. Unless and until you have a representation of a signal, not by just looking at the graph, you can't say much. So it has to be written in the form of an expression. Now this particular, these particular samples are generally written like this, x of n is equal to two, four, delta of n minus one. Depending on the location of the sample, this is the expression. So it, uh, almost, I mean, not I would say almost all, all of the uh, discrete time signal are generally represented like this. They will have some value at different discrete points. So delta actually represent whether it is at zero, whether it is at one, whether it is at two, three, four, and so on. This particular one is having only five samples. So uh, if you have noticed, there is another interesting thing in here in digital systems. One is uh, there are three fundamental operations. One is that multiplication, uh, addition, and delay, these are the three things involved. So it's a multiplication by a constant value, right? Then there is this delay, and then there is addition of all these. So uh, I did mention that in the previous class as well, every discrete time expression is going to have only these three mathematical operations, right? There is no complexity in it, it's pretty straightforward. Okay, so, uh, this is just a graphical representation of how, what are the major uh, mathematical operations that we are going to be discussing during the course of DSP. Uh, one is multiplication by a factor. The other one is accumulation. That means addition or subtraction of multiple. We call it accumulation because they're going to be either added, subtracted or difference, right? And then we have this unit delay operation. So each component is actually uh, at a distance from the previous one and that is actually introduced by a delay. So these are the three basic mathematical operations that we are going to be using during the DSP course throughout. Now, uh, let's check it out. Uh, let's try to analyze a filter, uh, how, how they are usually represented. Uh, well, if you are using it in MATLAB or any um, anywhere else uh, for digital signal processors. MATLAB is not the only language that's being used for DSPs. I mean, Python and other languages are out, out there that uh, they are used for the DSP. Uh, all the art, al almost all the artificial uh, intelligence algorithms, they, they use uh, DSPs. So 
naturally they are they are the same so uh, this is uh, based on the expression we wrote earlier on if you have the values of these coefficient being 3 minus 1 2 and 1 so what does it represent it means it has a length of 4 it has an order of 3 uh, that is the order if you remember uh, for filter there was first order filter second order filter third order filter and so on so this thing this actually in case of fir filter the highest value actually represent the order of the filter so if we want to write down this thing in the form of an expression this is how it's going to look like this generally sometimes the expression might be written like this or sometimes only the coefficient values are going to be available to you and you have to transform that into an expression so this is how it's going to look like you substitute the values and you get three minus one and then two and then x uh, this last one is one okay uh, this is another example uh, so this, this is something for you guys again to to work with you have let's say y of n this is the expression in this particular case what is the order of this filter the order of the filter is five right it's not three it's not one the order of the filter is defined by the highest value let's say if the input signal is this can we plot x of n yes we can plot x of n because that means it has a value of minus three at n equal to one and it has a value two at n equal to three i'm sure you guys can plot that because you have studied this in signal and system course now the second case is find the output y n when the input signal is x of n from the previous part list all the values so this is the expression all you have to do is the substitute the value of x into this you can either do this or you can transform this into a uh, impulse response expression and then you take the convolution of both whichever is easy to you you have to perform that this is just some uh, random calculation of these things the first case was to plot this so this is how the plot look like there's a value of minus three at one and there is a value of two at the value three so that is your uh, input signal right then we have uh, y of n so what are we going to do is this the, this is the tabular method it's pretty easy and pretty quick usually so you, you you write down all the value of x of n and then you have to find out the value of zero so what you're going to do is you're going to keep entering the value of n into this particular expression and that will give you different values of x like this for in first case if you put uh, y of zero so x of zero is zero x of minus 3 is 0, x of minus 5 is 0, so you end up with this. If you put value 1, so you have uh, x of n has x of 1 is actually minus 3, so you get minus 3 into 3 and you get a value of minus 9. Similarly, you put x of uh, the value of n being 2 and so on. So from this table, you get all the values of y of n. This is a quick method rather than uh, convolution, and you end up with values like these and you can easily plot them once you have all these values for all these values of n you can easily plot them okay so it's just the same things kind of rewritten there is uh, another case uh, if, and let's say for an fir filter is described by the expression like this in this particular case the order of the filter is three find out the impulse response now impulse response is pretty easy all you have to do is that if x is replaced by delta y become h that is the quickest way of finding h of n right then find out the output when the input x of n is equal to this that means x of n has a value of one at n equal to zero at n equal to two and at equal to four now how we actually sometimes the expression for x is written like this how we are going to translate it into an expression like this we had before so the first thing is that you write it down in the form that you are flexible with here we go so this is y of n your x of n has these values so uh, in order to find out find out the the value of h of n from impulse response from it all you have to do is replace x by delta of n like i discussed earlier on so you end up with the impulse response and i think you know how to plot this the second case is for the input values of x of n. Now, see, this is the way it's written. See, 
delta of n, delta of n minus 2, and delta of n minus 4, because this says the values are only there for 0, 2, and 4. So from this, we end up with an expression like this. Now we'll create a table. Now this in this table, again, a similar way, we keep on substituting the value of n into the, the table, and we will end up having the value of y of n. You can do it by substituting values into the original expression of y of n as well and end up with the same thing, which is